My name is Charlie Hammerslaw, and I founded Zoom Urban Gear. About two years ago, I was uh, in Europe and fell in love with electric scooters. So I came back to the United States, of course, bought a scooter, and um, started looking for some accessories. I went on Amazon, and I pretty quickly recognized that most of the accessories for electric scooters out there are really adaptations of things for bikes. So you get uh, uh, lights, baskets, um, uh, cell phone holders, and so on. And so there are very few things that were really adapted directly for electric scooter riders. Uh, and so I decided to um, think about getting into this business, looked at an opportunity, saw an opening, uh, went to Micromobility Europe last year and said, wow, there's a whole community here, and I want to do this. So I came across and... Um, decided to take a design process thinking approach which centers the needs of users. And the problem, the first problem we started attacking was that of storing a scooter in a small urban apartment. Um, the, the more frictionless we can make the scooter experience, the more likely it is that people will be able to uh, buy and use uh, scooters and want to. So the main problem with owning a scooter in a city is that where do you store it? You have to really store it inside so it doesn't uh, get exposed to the weather doesn't get uh, uh, exposed to the threat of being stolen. So the solution I'd like to present today is called the Meerkat. Um, this is an electric, a vertical electric scooter stand and accessory hub. And it is designed, uh, first of all, to be used as a stand. So I'm going to ask my friend Barbara to demonstrate. The first thing you do is you roll it up into this wheel well. It, it can accommodate from 8 to 13 inch diameter wheels. So it's pretty much most of them that are out there, including where we're going in terms of larger wheels. And um, the next step is to fold down and lock the stem into the scooter, uh, into the scooter deck, and then just get behind it, fold it up, and gravity puts it up into the scooter stand. It's designed to be. Uh, universal in the sense that it can adjust up and down, back and forth, and for different wheel wells. Uh, very easily to, easy to adjust with these thumb screws. So that's the function as a, as a scooter stand. The, um, the other part of it is an accessory hub. So on this side, there are four different attachment points. And this is a proprietary attachment system. We're just in the process of designing accessories for this. The first is a, essentially it's a helmet hook or a helmet podium uh, where you can store your, your helmet. And the others are going to be used for things like a charger basket um, where you can wrap the excess cord, a, uh, a place to store your tools and manuals, a tray underneath, and so on. Now, we actually are proposing to just open up the standard. Anybody can use it. It's, it's two pinpoints and a, uh, and a thumb screw. So we'll be delighted if somebody else wants to design accessories that are going on this. This becomes essentially the central piece. But again, if somebody can come up with a better way and a more specialized accessory, that'll be great. Um, and lastly, I'll just mention it's designed to be uh, lightweight. It weighs about 13 pounds. And also, there are four different configurations where they can be chained together. So it's not just meant for urban apartments. It's also meant for uh, garages and, and so on. Um, with that, happy to take your questions. What's the selling price? Um, MSRP right now is about $150. Uh, it depends a little bit on where the manufacturing costs come in. And we are in the process of sourcing of factories. Aesthetically, I think it looks great. Aesthetically, I think it looks great. Practically, it looks like it actually takes up more room by creating a stand. So well, that's that's a good question because when a scooter is down, essentially you've got this thing at about uh, elbow height, and you can run into it. It's much more sturdy, You're right? It doesn't take that much less space on the ground, but it is a centralized place to keep all of your scooter stuff. That's a, I mean, that's a, that's a very good question. Um, and the other thing is it's also, it's more securely attached here and and so on. But you're right. I also know some brands that have decided not to go down the foldable yeah. mechanism. So. It's, only, it's only with the foldable ones. So it, and also the, du the dual stem ones probably aren't going to work. But it's covering probably at least 97% of scooters out there right now in terms of the sales. 
and our limit is 100 pounds too. Would you envision selling this through a website? D2C? We're going to start with DTC. Okay. And, start, and that's where we're going. Interesting. Start with that. I mean, for what it's worth, I think it would be interesting to partner up with some of the brands that already have foldable school scooters and sell it with them. Or for that matter, I think selling it at bike shops would be very interesting as well. Because yep. something like this, I could imagine somebody saying, you know what? I F it. Like, I just, I'll, I'll pay 150 bucks. I'll get something that is helpful to store. Spend $900 on a scooter. It doesn't seem like a really... Right. A big deal to spend another 150 to make it livable. I mean, scooters are wonderful transportation devices, and they're really bad roommates. Um, and so this is about domesticating the scooter a little bit. Um, so that should be your tagline. Yeah. Say what, uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, no. I was going to say that should be your tagline, domesticate the scooter. <laughs> well, I used, I used to say they're bad pets, too. This helps domesticate them. But, you know, I was really inspired by what Horace said yesterday about what's the interface between scooters and the rest of the world. And this is at least one of the answers. Amazing. Charlie, thank you. Uh, round of applause for Charlie.